Is this going to be a limited 12 issue series? Because tens right now and two more are, are they in the can? As a, as they say. Can and and, I, and I, again, I always I originally wanted to do it as an annual, but I'm doing a, a amended annual, which is kind of a two issue uh, trade combined. It's just called USSA, which is Atomica versus the United States. It was going to be in the story, encompassed in the God is Red story, but I wanted to flesh it out because I thought it would be a cool, you know, 44 pager instead of just one issue. Awesome. And you've been doing the art for these packs a couple of issues. Uh, are there going to be any, uh, like, who's going to be the cover artists or uh, any good pinups uh, upcoming? Uh, issues? Yeah, actually, I, I picked, uh, I just picked up two covers from San Julian. He's a Spanish, famous Spanish artist. He's just an absolute genius. And, of course, you know, 10, 11 is Simon Bisley and Glenn Fabry and uh, Arthur Sudam did, uh, Arthur Sudam and Bill Sienkiewicz did the two covers for USSA. So we're moving right along. Now, some, usually you'll get emails from uh, people thinking you're un-American yeah. or go back to Comrade. Russia. Comrade. Are you getting any of that this con, or is it a pretty nice laid-back con? The Soviet thing has kind of died down. Every, occasionally I get the religious angle with, because the story is God is red. I get a little bit of that. But for the most part, you know, I think they finally caught up with the fact that I'm not from Russia, and it's not anti-American. I don't know what's going to happen with USSA. But we'll see. <laughs> uh, do you get a, a lot of requests for crossovers between like any of the uh, other Russian superheroes in like Marvel or DC? Like, do you get ever ever like uh, who would win in a fight, uh, Atomica or uh, Millar's uh, Red Sun Superman or Rocket? I get, I get a little bit of the Red Sun questions. They think they somehow just assume it's connected. I used to get Red Star questions when Chris Gossett had Red Star. I don't get that as much, but I do get the Red Sun questions like, hey, does this have anything to do with that? But it really doesn't. I mean, I, you know, if there was any way to do a DC crossover, I'd love to do it, but, you know, they're, they're, they're like, it. they're not really, I'm in the cheap seats with an indie book, and DC's not in a big hurry to let me do it, so. Well, it's a fantastic indie book, and do you have anything, anything planned uh, after Atomica? Yeah. Well, right now I try to stay focused on Atomica, but when I was in college I had an indie title that I put out kind of just in school uh, about the, the homeless kids in Rio de Janeiro. It's kind of a horror story, uh, you know, fantasy kind of thing, but um, I'm working on that. That's something I'm really excited about after I finish up Atomica in the fall and over the winter. And then I had another title, but I'm going to stick with the horror. It's called The Hostage. It's kind of like, again, it's a horror book based in Rio and about... You know, uh, it's set in, the, again, the underworld of the street children. I actually did a ton of research with Amnesty International and all that, so I'm excited about it. That sounds pretty creepy. Very dark. Yeah, it's, I mean, it kind of fits my art style, and it's a little creepy, but it's not creepy like slasher creepy. It's just kind of a based in reality, but yet horror at the same time. A little unnerving. A little unnerving. Just I was. I spent a lot of time in Rio when I was in college, and I was just absolutely taken back by the volume of street kids and the poverty there. Coming, being the bourgeois American, where we worry about you know, decaf lattes and and, and our cell phones. I was just shocked on how many little kids were living in the street. So. It really was a kick in the ass. And do you know anything, uh, if uh, Andrew Dabb has any upcoming projects after Atomica? Andrew, Andrew's, you know, he's a heavy hitter now. He's doing a lot of Hollywood stuff. He's got a lot of, he actually had three of his screenplays picked up, you know, and he's doing a lot of comic stuff. And, I, you know, I hope, he, you know, he's willing to come on board with the hostage. I'd love to keep working with him because his style and my style just fit perfectly. And he's a super nice guy. And, um, but I know he's doing really well. He's living in L.A. now, so he's okay. Mr. Big Shot, so, yeah. I don't know if I have to call his people and they call my people. He's probably wearing a beret by now, for all I know, but. You get a lot of uh, more comic book writers uh, in L L.A. nowadays, like uh, Brubaker, Millar. Yeah. It seems to be that's kind of where comics are sort of going, where you, you can do both, or, or a lot of comic ideas are getting crafted into TV stuff, because there's a lot more options now with cable. Right. So yeah, good for them. If they're, you know, if it works for them. Now you've been here uh, for the past couple of days, right, at this yeah. booth. Have you noticed that the foot traffic has been just in, more insane than previous years, or is just around the same? Or it, it seems it seems to have leveled off. But a lot of that, I think, is based on the fact that they did top out the ticket sales because of the fire marshal. They just said, you know, years ago, no, three years ago when they had to shut the doors on Saturday, it was just a shitstorm in here and they finally said, hey, look, we can't have this place bursting at the seams. 
The weekend tends to be a little bit easier on the floor because a lot of people are upstairs. There's a lot of big panels. You know, Johnny Depp was here yesterday, and it was all that going on, and and uh, all the vampire shit they had. But it seems to be, a, even though it's crazy, it seems to be a, a more subdued. Well, uh, they just announced that uh, ticket prices for the four-day passes for next year are going to go up to 100 bucks. So maybe, hopefully, that'll thin out the crowds a little. Because I've been hearing comments of people going, "Well, that's a little bit too much. Maybe I'll skip it next year." So who knows? Maybe. Well, I don't know. I mean, this year they sold out four months sooner than they did last year, and I know the tickets were going on eBay for like 400 dollars. I then Comic Con had their own account just to flood the market, and I had to get my cameraman here one, and luckily uh, I was able to for 85 dollars instead of 400, 600 dollars yeah. because that would have been pretty bad. Well, I mean, they didn't take care of you press-wise. I'm surprised. Uh, press passes just went out, uh, luckily split, it felt like. So I'm going to have to really get on that for next year. But, yeah. you know, it's, uh, we'll yeah. Hey, we'll put you on the list. <laughs> Alrighty. You're an Alex Ross client. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Well, Sal was nice enough to uh, uh, give us uh, not only a sketchbook, uh, signed sketchbooks by Bill Sienkiewicz and Alex Ross, but also trays of Atomica to give away as a contest prize, too. So Because you guys have been asking for so many, I, I get all these emails asking constantly, when's more Atomica coming out? Like, my shop doesn't get it. Where can I get it at? So if they want more Atomica, Atomica goodness or Sal goodness, where, where could they find it? Well, I mean, right now we're going through Diamond again, so it is available at their, if they ask their store owners and the store owners are willing to order it, they can get it through them. Otherwise, they can get it through mercurycomics.com and our roopsworld.com. We have, you know, which is the guy that I work with and it's all available, so. Make it easier. I'm sorry if it's harder to get. Some store owners, not all store owners are big on picking up indie titles. Now, uh, Longbox has made some uh, headlines here at Comic-Con. Is that something you've been looking into at all? And Maybe something to uh, uh, put the toe in the water, so, so to see? A little bit. I mean, you, all, you really always have to, especially if you're an indie title, you really always have to kind of adapt, especially since Diamond put a lot more restrictions on how many your orders can be, and also just if you want to survive. Because, you know, a lot of stores just, because it, Diamond doesn't have the 50% return policy anymore, are just not always willing to pick up as many indie titles as they used to be. So, a lot, and a lot of fans just say, hey, I'm waiting on a trade. I'm waiting on a trade. So, I think it's all good. You just kind of have to continue to adapt to where the fans are going, you know. Well, Sal, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, it's always. Thanks again for all your support. Uh, I, I do what I can. I Atomica is out on the stores now. Uh, issue 10 came out this week. So go and bug your store retailers, whoever you get your comics from. Sal, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. One of my sponsors for Cayman's Comic Corner is Rising Sun Creations. And if you go to rsc-online.com, you can uh, see, see the best of both worlds of manga, U.S. comic books, and uh, collectible toys imported straight from Japan, all conveniently located in one online store and one uh, convenient booth here at Comic-Con, booth 235. They are my sponsor, and I thank them for being my sponsor, and you should go out to rsc-online.com and buy tons of product from them. I mean, look at this. Uh, school Rumble, one through nine, 50 bucks. How can you beat a deal like that? I'm gonna go read that later. J just you watch. Alrighty, this is Kami's Comic Corner, Rising Sun Creations. We'll check back in with them by the end of the con. Moni, it's a pleasure to uh, have a nice little interview with you. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Uh, now, how has Comic-Con been going for you so far this year? Oh, really good. Really good. There are tons of commissions as usual. <coughs> then we had, <coughs> sorry. Then we had uh, 2009 exclusive edition sketchbook that I put together for this con. And a lithograph as well, a print I put together uh, for for this convention for, for this year San Diego as well. And it's going well. I mean it's always a great time and uh, I had the chance to see people and friends who I see only like twice or three times a year. So it's not only a it's not only an exclusive about business, but it's also and at the same time having a good time and trying to, you know, like enjoy myself. 